It's not mine. I stole it. <laughs> I stole it. everybody what is up what is up as always thanks for stopping by to another video today we're back out on the lovely streets of Philadelphia on Columbus Ave on an early morning we are headed out for a road trip today but I'm on the Sportster now but the twist here is we're not gonna be road tripping on the Sportster we're gonna be swapping this bike out for a different bike to take a little road trip on today and so what the heck am I talking about we are headed down to South Philly. We're gonna stop by to see our buddy at HCG Moto. We're gonna drop off the Sportster and we're gonna pick up the 2022 Triumph Street Twin. So you guys saw my video on the Triumph Street Twin that I did a little while back, maybe a month or so ago. Got to take that bike out. Compliments of our pals, friends of the show over at HCG Moto. Remember that's the rental garage rent different motorcycles out of Philadelphia but I got to take that bike around town had a blast had a great time but really all in all it was maybe like 15 20 miles just zipping back and forth around town now we're actually gonna take that thing out on a little bit of a road trip today over to Jersey we're gonna drop off the Sportster pick up the street twin and see how the street twin handles in comparison to the Sportster on long road trips I'm going to be giving my thoughts and impressions on kind of the differences of kind of a longer ride between these two bikes, the Speed Twin. I'm excited. I love riding that bike. I'm going to be really curious to see how it handles the differences, the similarities from the Sportster. Obviously, you guys know I've done a ton of road trips on the Sportster. And so I might even get a little analysis of which one I personally think is better. We'll see if you guys agree with me on that. But stay tuned for that piece we're almost down here to get this street twin so we'll check back in just a second alrighty and just like that we are now on a triumph speed twin coming up out of south philly we're going to meet up with a couple friends for this ride so they're also going to be on triumphs and it's going to be kind of funny they're not going to be expecting me to show up on this they're going to expect my loud ass sportster to pull up so yeah anyways a little background how this came to be and why i was going to take this bike on a road trip anyways is as most of you probably saw in my last video i've got a plug in the rear tire of the sportster and it seems to be fine honestly but i was kind of a little like getting a little sketched out about it to take it on like a longer trip so where we're headed is asbury park it's gonna be like 80 miles one way so I mean, we're looking at like 160 round trip and I'm like, man, do I want to risk it on a long trip like that? Get stuck if this something happens to this tire. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, you know, obviously I got my buddies over at HCG Moto and I'm like, it's like a really cool opportunity if you think about it, because like if your bike is down, like mine, for example, it's a little sketch or you're getting work done to it and you need a ride, like you can literally just rent a bike from them in the, in the city. So like perfect opportunity to get out on a different bike right here while mine is like not in the best condition obviously <laughs> so i hit those guys up and he's like heck yeah man like come down grab one of the bikes you know take it on a road trip take it for a spin for the day so obviously huge shout out to hcg moto for the opportunity to take this bad boy on a longer distance ride obviously like i said i was around town with it last time but now we're getting out about 160 miles on this thing and i am certainly appreciative of that opportunity it's like I might not even have taken my bike out today like for anything very long if I wasn't able to do this so still gets the opportunity to get on a bike get on a different bike good experience so huge thanks huge shout out make sure you check them out obviously I am going to drop their info down in the comments anytime you're looking for a new ride new bike test ride something need something to ride for the day try out something different hit them up give them a shout but we are headed over to this coffee shop right here should be meeting up with two other triumphs and then we're gonna head out on the road and i'm running a little late ah oh, there we go i found him look at that Two other triumphs speed twin bonnie street twin 
we are taking these things out for a ride to Asbury Park so we're gonna check in about 50 miles from here let you guys know how this road trip's going and what my spirits has been like with the speed twin alrighty so we just wrapped up the first leg of the trip to Asbury we've got the triumphs sitting here now we're gonna head back we're talking a little bit about my thoughts the first leg of the trip was about 80 miles we're heading 80 miles back talk a little bit about what the experience has been like so far Alrighty, so like I said, we are in the lovely Asbury Park, New Jersey. This is kind of like the uh, downtown section of Asbury Park, I guess you would say. So yeah, I would say that the Speed Twin has held up pretty good so far. I'm excited to talk a little bit about my thoughts and experience so far. Kind of on that first 80 miles and as we head back about another 80 to Philly right now. So some of the main differences obviously that I noticed right off the bat. I mean, when you think about taking this thing on a long trip, some things to consider are storage obviously as you saw a little bit back there i had to have a backpack kind of strapped to the tail of the seat obviously on my sportster i've got the sissy bar mounted to take all my stuff to but obviously you could outfit this bike of course to travel you know road trips in long distance you could get some different bags and stuff to throw on the side different mounts different straps so all good there, like obviously you're gonna be able to outfit a speed twin to travel long distance and do your road trips just like you would the Sportster. So the next thing that I was ready, really kind of interested and ready to consider for the speed twin is obviously the riding position. So your riding position is one of the things I was concerned about. You look down, you see my knees are pretty well bent there. The ankles are at a pretty big angle with this kind of aggressive riding position. And so after a while, I will say, I was definitely starting to get some fatigue in the knees and in the ankles and stuff. You can get a, get a look down there and kind of see what that stance is. Now, obviously, when you compare that to the Sportster, the Sportster with the mid controls there, your leg is gonna be a little bit more at 90, depending on your height. Your ankles are gonna be a little less flexed, obviously. You're gonna be more flat with your foot. So I, I really actually prefer the mid controls of my Sportster on the longer riding. It's a little more comfortable. The next spot, but also don't get me wrong, it's not like unmanageable with the Speed Twin right now, for example. It's, it's totally fine, it's doable, just something to consider. Something I'm noticing a lot of fatigue in my ankles and knees. The next thing obviously for distance is your arms and your handlebars, of course. You really have a low down handlebar here with the speed twin my arms are definitely outstretched right now with the sports so they're obviously raised up a little bit i've got the mini apes and even on like the 883 i believe the bars are up just a tad higher than this so again something to consider the riding position when you're thinking about taking this bike long distance and when you put it up against my sportster for example i would probably take the sportster in that scenario but to go along with the riding position it's interesting the riding comfort is actually better on the speed twin i would say with this suspension and this seat this has been a very oh there's some nice views out here coming across this bridge this has been a very very cushy comfy ride pretty much this whole way i've done this exact ride on the sportster and i was hitting a lot of stuff getting a little fatigued with some of the suspension the bumps and this and that the suspension and the ride comfort head and shoulders above the Sportster to be honest. Riding position I take the Sportster but like I'm saying riding comfort, suspension seat better than the Sportster. So the next thing about this little uh, day trip, road trip here on the Triumph Speed Twin to consider is we were doing a lot of different riding on the way over here. So we did some highway, we did some back roads, we did some like single lane simple roads you know we were up around 75 mile an hour down to 60 65 slow stuff fast stuff light to light so we really hit everything getting up here so one of the things that you've really got to consider here is obviously this is a small compact cafe racer style bike no wind protection up front here <laughs> So that is really a huge thing to consider. I really didn't think it was going to make that much difference. But what I've noticed, even with my little Memphis Shades Cafe fairing, I've noticed that the difference between that and this is actually pretty big. That little fairing cuts off a lot of wind. We were doing some highway about 70, 75 miles an hour, and it was really getting to me, like taking wind to the chest and face. 
obviously there is Harleys and Sportsters with no wind protection too, but you could outfit this thing as well. You know, a little speed screen or something. If you were thinking about taking this thing long distance, you would really want to consider some wind protection. If you're just hopping around light to light, cafe racing, all that type of thing, maybe not so much. You might not need the wind protection. So that is some of my initial thoughts as we fill up here in Jersey. You can't pump your own gas, which is strange. But like I said, so that's some of my initial thoughts. Once we get back to Philly, I'm actually going to wrap this up. Once I complete the actual trip, hit this final 80 miles here, we're going to wrap it up, talk a little bit more about the differences and get my final opinion on what I think is better for a road trip. and as you can see we are now done with the road trip we're still on the speed twin you can see we're back on the lovely streets of philadelphia and man am i glad like i said i wanted to get the whole wrap up of the whole trip and be able to give a whole impression of that the whole round trip and i'm glad i'm i'm glad i waited and i'm glad i did because so like i said we took a little bit of highway a little bit of back roads a little bit of this a little bit of that on the way out there but so we just did all highway to get back here so this bike was literally just on the highway for about 70 miles holding 75 80 85 90 miles an hour the whole time and i feel like that gives me now a pretty good impression of everything the bike is and everything the bike can do now and so after getting off the highway now what we did was to come home from asbury park we took 195 over to Trenton and then down 295 to 95 back into Philly so if anybody's familiar with those that's like pretty fast highway st type stuff and like I said just a minute ago I'm talking about like wind protection you know how it does a little bit on the highway and stuff like that things to consider like I said I was taking a lot of wind that is for sure no doubt about that so that's one thing about this bike on the highway the other thing too is kind of the size I think I mentioned that before very lightweight short and compact you were getting blown around a little bit that's one of the differences there with the sportster i definitely noticed with the little bit of the longer wheelbase a little bit heavier keeps you a little more planted and stable on some of those straight line speeds on the highway now the huge difference of where just confirming that this thing is an absolute beast is obviously it's a six-speed transmission so you got the six-speed transmission 100 horsepower 94 foot-pounds of torque and that was just so obvious on the highway like the power was just so impressive on the highway i'm up in six gear going about 80 miles an hour about 4,000 rpms ducking and dodging between cars you can crack the throttle at 80 miles an hour and there's just a ton more power left when you're on the highway with the sportster at 80 miles an hour i mean you're gonna keep going and accelerating but at that point the throttle's like mush i mean obviously that's the difference you got the five speed on the sportster a lot less power anyways but I'm going 80 on the highway on my bike. I try to accelerate super quick or like put the bike wherever you want with some quick ducking and dodging and it just doesn't respond the same way. Obviously totally different engine of course, but I was very impressed with the throttle response, even up around 80, 90 miles an hour. Um, probably shouldn't say this, but I think I took this thing up to about 110, 115 on the highway on 95. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drop this bike back off at HCG Moto. Thanks again. Huge shout out to those guys. Really appreciate letting them hop, let me hop on this bike today. But what we're going to do is we're going to hop back on the Sportster, wrap this video up on the Sportster, and then I'm going to give you guys some insight into which one I would rather road trip on and go long distance on. Alrighty, so there we have it. We are back on the Sportster and... Oh my god, I think that's probably the longest I've been on another bike. That was like four hours total. And oh my god, my bike actually feels like foreign to me right now. Like I was talking about the position, like look at all this space you got. My arms are all up high. It feels like totally different and weird. Yeah, but anyways, that was a pretty awesome experience. So I mean, I would say to wrap it up, like if you think about the Speed Twin, if, if I could point out some of the things it's good at, some of the things it's bad at on a road trip, the stuff that I didn't like that I would per se would probably be the riding position, probably all the wind, obviously that naked up front, not a lot of functionality with like storage and straps and stuff like that. But things that I would say that it's good at and that I enjoyed, it was definitely a comfortable ride. Now, like I said, I didn't enjoy the riding position, but the ride of comfortability, if that's a word, was actually really nice with the suspension and the seat. 
other things that I would say that it was really good at obviously the power the power on the highway was great even though the size and the wheelbase I wasn't a fan of on the highway the, I mean the power was just like a lot of confidence in the power very comfortable smooth easy power a lot of power left at highway speed like I said I mean you could accelerate right out of 80 no problem and then when you compare that to the Sportster obviously some of the things that it excels at a heavier a little more stable a little more wheelbase for some straight line speed a little bit more functionality with traveling you know you throw some bags a lot of straps hooks bars all that different stuff up there so I'm pretty excited about that experience that was pretty cool I got to have the experience of a road trip with a Triumph Speed Twin give it a little comparison to my Harley Sportster Iron 1200 and of course let me know what you guys think out there let me know if you've been on a Speed Twin Sportster what do you think of that comparison would you like to ride long distance on a Triumph Speed Twin or a Harley Sportster? And so the big reveal, I would say at the end of the day, I still think I like my Sportster for the longer trips. I, I think it's got to be the riding position. It's got to be the main factor to me. I'm still trying to get loosened up from how tight I was on that bike, that Speed Twin. Then now, obviously, don't get me wrong, that's not to say you can't do distance. Obviously, you could. It's just a matter of what you're willing to put up with from the position of the riding position and the wind, of course. So, but I honestly, at the end of the day, I think I have to take my Sportster, even though it's an old clunker. I think I'm just a little bit more comfortable taking it longer all day like this than I was on the Speed Twin. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it down in the comments. Let me know what you think of that Speed Twin overall and traveling distance on that bike or any Triumph and the Bonneville lineup. I know a lot of those are kind of set up the same Speed Twin, Street Twin, Speedmaster. But as always, we are going to skedaddle on home here, wrap up this day with a ride home on the streets of Philadelphia. As always, be a friend, tell a friend, tell them to stop by, subscribe to the channel, go ahead and like this video, and drop a comment down there. Make sure you ride safe out there, guys. Make it a good one. It's the Moto John. We'll see you all on down the road. Peace.